I wake up in the morning, the coins on the rise. I'm gonna get some money in and come along for the ride. You know I'll get a second mortgage and max out my cards because I know it's gonna moon all the way to the stars. Oh man, I'm gonna quit my job. These crypto coins are gonna make me alive. Heading straight to the moon My hands were made for this I always took it and quit Now I'm wishing that I had it Cause it pumped as soon as I did Around the corner is where I'm at Come and see me, I'll be sure to ask Would you like fries with that? Would you like fries with that? I'm here with one and only Lynn of Dot Swap. Lynn, how are you doing today? Yeah, it's good, good. The weather is hot here. Oh yeah? Where are you coming in from? Yeah, I'm from China, from mainland China, Fuzhou, which is next to Taiwan Strait. Yeah. That's amazing. So this is on-chain summer. And mm. during a period in crypto now, we've gone into divergence figuring out options, making options, and now we're making decisions on those options. And what we're watching in BTC unfold is, is that the, the, the network effects and the market within Bitcoin is maturing. So Lynn, tell us a little bit about your story with DotSwap. Where does DotSwap come from? Okay, DotSwap come from our explanation on BRC20. So we start to uh build a nft platform nft market press market price first then we realize that the fungible token is more has more potentials so we build our swap for brc20 as early as like uh in september 2023 that's amazing then yeah, then this year when runes came out, we became the first working uh, AMM on uh, AMM swap on runes protocol. And uh, yeah, our product went live in uh, the day, the first day, room protocol activated. Yeah, on 20th April. So, so that. But the back one, yeah. So, were you the first swap on BTC to go live? I, I think, yeah, the the might be the first swap, yeah, for BRC twenty and for room, for room. I think probably we are the first because we we are live since day one, right? Right on, right on. So we've seen um, a wave of a lot of creativity happening in, in Bitcoin. And a lot of people right now, as we're having this conversation, 
are are of the opinion that maybe uh, the hype has ended and we're entering into a new era in on-chain scaling within BTC. What are your thoughts about that, Lin? So on-chain scaling is very, very important, I think, that will help we, us to uh, get more mass adoption, right? So more users are being able to use Bitcoin. If the fees goes high, it's like if it is not scaled on-chain, then the block space and the transaction volume is so limited that only those high value transactions can go in through. They are willing to pay in very high transaction rates, right? But through this way, that average user will be locked out of Bitcoin. So I think, yeah, we, we need to find several ways that we can help Bitcoin to scale. But it is not like that we build another bank like ETF and just use Bitcoin as a precious metal sold in vault, then everyone will using traditional banking services. That's what the Bitcoin white paper are going against, right? The Bitcoin is a way that we can not rely on a trust parties to make transactions, to make commercials between parties, right? But currently, I think there are a lot of trust there. Okay, so yeah, this is the reality and we need to face that. Yeah. So you as a, as a company, a dot swap, how are you guys foreseeing a future where um, there will be more congestion on BTC because of there being more activity happening on chain? What do you foresee? Do you foresee BTC scaling or do you foresee yourselves as a company having to pivot in some creative way? Yeah, I think we might find several ways to adapt the reality lab. BTC will not scale, right? BTC cannot scale as we thought, like just like increase the block size or sourcing like that. Maybe in the long-term future, all the, the answers are just locked in contracts in BTC. I see. And then everyone will move on to other uh, block space that has a lot of transactions can be processed. Okay. Perfect. So as a miner, right? So people are worrying about the income from the miner, right? Yes. But in, they can they can earn more, not from the uh blockchain rewards or blockchain uh subsidy. And uh, because the subsidy is decreasing and the transaction volume will not be so high because the, there is so much is expensive transactions and the, the transaction volume is small, then there will be no serious business that build their transact build their business on the so small transaction volume, right? Then there will be no more fees for the miners to connect to collect. But Correct. we yeah. might have some sort of like merged mining that will help our miners to uh, safeguard all the blockchain via proof of work. So that would be, I think, interesting. So maybe in a very long term future. So are you yourself working on a merge mining solution for Bitcoin that would help aid with this situation? Yeah, I'm, I think I uh, think more about that previously, but not working on that currently. I see. It, yeah, it would be, become uh, a very good way when the time is right, when the uh, all the transactions, all the transactions are are uh, very expensive to process in BTC. Then they will create a very big market that will enable other solutions can kick in, right? 
So, so does this? The... Fee... I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. You were saying. Mm -hmm. So if the transaction fees are not so high, so every possible activities can actually happen on chain. That is why we are building a na native L1 solution, L1 swap for users. I think L1 is the key. We will not build things for like L2s in short term and mid term because we, we have need to have a vivid on-chain ecosystem first, then we can get more users to uh, lower the cost of the transactions by uh, using other technology like L2 or Lightning Network or such things like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's really, um, you know, why I wanted to have you here because I see you as a, an entity, DotSwap, uh, that really prioritizes emphasizing the growth of on-chain transactions. Well, I find that very valuable. So I have a question regarding the merge mining solutions that you're proposing. Is this something, that, uh, are you open to uh, what Paul Storks is doing with drive chains? Is is that more of in line of, of the solutions that you see within, Bit within Bitcoin BTC that would um, alleviate congestion in the future? Mm, I'm I'm not sure. I'm just thinking that uh, my ideal solution will be locking any UTXO on BTC, then move to the sidechain or merged mining chain or L2s, then comes back. We all respect the assets, the data, and the, the value of BTC on UTXO locked in UTXO. So we I'm I would better to use any technology knowledge that is possible to do this right and not to uh like to modify any um new protocols on btc i see so yeah so that is that we need to build a bridge the bridge is l1 assets to any l2s then back to l1 assets I we see. cannot modify the protocol on L2, on L1, right? To specific designer to fit several L2s. I think it, it should be a real uh, universal protocol that we can apply on BTC. So that is my opinion. Okay, so now since we're on the topic, I would like to ask your opinion on OpCat. There's been a lot of noise happening in BTC about enabling, re-enabling um, OpCat. What are your opinions on OpCat? Yeah, it's good. I see yeah, no reason why we don't have OpCat. We have all the opcodes on Bitcoin. We heard, I think it is in the original design, right? So right, just yes. because of nobody can do it right and find a security secure way to doing that so if we can find secure way of enable it it won't cause harm right correct um have you come across opnet there's a there's a team out there that i guess they discovered a way to um to not have to re-enable the op code but to take advantage of a solution that's already found within bitcoin called opnet have you heard of opnet um, never heard of it. Okay. What's that? Uh, I, I will have to send you documentation on it. It's a meta okay. protocol uh, on, on Bitcoin. And they say that it's already in Bitcoin. They just have to turn it on and use it pretty much. Okay. So yeah. if it's not adding new up goals, that would be, I think that would be good. Because we, I think we end up, uh, re-enable upcodes in Bitcoin is good, but do not try to add more things into the Bitcoin protocol because that, that will bring a lot of messy into the whole ecosystem. Everyone wants what make key successful or there there will, will be patterns applied on that or something like that, right? So it it will be a lot of uh politics and the debates on whether we should enable this way or that way. So that wastes a lot of energy. So 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm I agree. In the way that we just enable previous of goals and to see what we can create for it, right? So, so Lynn, um, let me ask you. I I want to ask you a very honest question here. Oh, uh, why BTC? Because you could have you you could have done this uh, on Dogecoin as well, for example. Um, is mm -hmm. it because BTC has the most liquidity, the biggest market? The, um, it's the biggest network, the most security, the most hash power. Is that the reason why you chose BTC? Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay. It's that the reason because the, the, there's more liquidity there. Right. Have you thought about doing anything with Solana? Uh, not yet. Okay. I'm not a Solana guy. And you're, yeah. you're UTXO guy. Your team is UTXO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only UTXO. Yeah. Awesome. I, I love the, the structure of UTSO. I think that UTSO is much cost efficient, much simpler. And yeah, it creates some maybe a uh, barrier, which is not so bad because if you are the most advanced team there, you know better UTSO than any others. So the, the barrier is not a very bad thing, right? So you can build your te technology more advanced and not easier for them to copy. Like someone will just use the, uh, uh, some of the Bitcoin technology, like they misuse the uh, seek hash none, which is probably is give away whatever you want in this UTX. So you, you sign the signature and forget about it. So you get, just give out the ownership of the UTXO. If it is not done carefully, it will cause a lot of harm. So within the Ethereum ecosystem of DeFi, we saw a lot of wrapped coins where you, where you would be able to wrap a coin from another network and trade it within Ethereum. Is that something that you would want to do within uh, DotSwap where I would like wrap Monero and trade it on BTC. Is that something that we that we could look forward to in the future? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is much possible, but uh, we only need to build things like that in a very decentralized way, right? So no trust third parties will be involved and the protocol itself will be, I think it, it, it need to be like atomic swap and they need to be trustless. So if we cannot build that trustless one, so why not build a centralized exchange, right? Awesome. Uh, I would like to ask you about uh, stable coins because it seems as if the, the stable coin aspect within a swap is extremely important. And I see that DotSwap has adopted NUSD and BAM. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, endeavor that's happening there? Yeah, we will support every possible use case for room and any possible use case uh, for uh, stable coin, so called stable coin. I'm not sure if the stable coin is so stable. I think BTC is stable because we, they are the fixed number, right? But the US dollars is not so stable. <laughs> it may collapse yeah, in the near future, right? It could, yeah. So, yeah, you could, right? But BTC itself, if we measure the insets, it is m much more stable. <laughs> it depends on your angle of view. Okay, so I think stable coin is a very interesting and promising scenario that uh, we can use our swap and then we can use Bitcoin. So yeah, we, we will support any any other maybe potential applications right but currently yeah uh stable coins like nuc that's pretty good yeah their community is strong and vivid and good vibe there and i think you know we can we can explore more from it like loans like peer-to-peer -peer loans right like some um uh, uh applications regarding the NFTs or something like that, or, or anything is possible, right? But yeah, we have to help them to build the pack with the co correct view, uh, correct value, right? 
and we we need to build interface for other applications that can be uh can be connected right to create a more vivid ecosystem this is not applications independently but a more uh well connected ecosystem so i think the stable coin is the key right so not only swap but we have swap and stable coin then we can have other applications that work together so that's why we we are offering our apis right because the apis are much easier to in uh to be integrated and then after that we can find other uh maybe uh, the more decentralized ways than HTTP APIs to work together. Like to we we can build things using uh payment channels, we can exchange change things, exchange information on Bitcoin network from peer to peer and using the uh transaction as the envelope to um send information, receive information and apply value onto it so that is possible in the i think near future it is possible we can build things not relying on http but on that's the awesome. network. so mm. dot swap as as um as an entity do you guys want to focus mostly on on-chain assets or are you guys desiring to um bring into the chain the outside assets as in wrapped coins what's your priority on-chain assets or assets that are outside of the chain yeah i i think there is no particular um priority there but we will see what we can bring to the whole ecosystem i think currently we are focusing on on-chain activities that is what we are best at and i think it has a lot of new users and more users then divided into different l2s different layers different um other alt alt coins right so um, make make our application working perfectly on bitcoin l1 layer one is the uh, first priority but there is also very good opportunity that if there are already established ecosystem right applications that they can move to Bitcoin L1 we can be the bridge that help them to uh, get more liquidity from BTC and the most important part is how we can do it uh, trustlessly right it yeah how, it how would someone do that how what how, how what would that look like if I had an entity? If I had a, a if I was part of a cryptocurrency, an mm -hmm. altcoin that was outside of Bitcoin, and I wanted to be part of a of the more of the pool of liquidity that is the BTC network itself, how would I use dot swap to bring my network into the BTC network through dot dot swap? How would I go about doing that? Okay, so it is just like a reverse wrapped BTC. Maybe we can wrap the US USD tether and wrap any other ERC20 or other tokens on BTC. Is that possible? I think, yeah, we might find a way. So you guys are, are constantly, I see, like in a process of discovery. And that's what I've been noticing from a lot of people like yourself that are working in BTC. You guys are constantly looking for opportunities. And, and my question to you is, um are you because are you being as surprised by all the discoveries as someone like me because every time I, I i turn on the computer i see something brand new like a new way of doing something within within a space that i thought was very limited with four megabytes with taproot and segwit you know you you would think that not a lot could be accomplished on btc but it's it's becoming evident that you would more than likely be able to accomplish as much as you're able to accomplish in Ethereum, correct? Yes, yes. So um, I would not rather take Ethereum as the competitor. I think it is totally different 
narrative, right? It is yes. like a word computer or, or word calculator, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the BTC is uh, digital gold, and uh, we have digital jewelry made of gold, right? And yeah, such things like that. So different applications will apply to different scenario and different use, different stories. And yeah, the innovation comes from you know what you can do, and you might know where the ban the boundary lies. So I think on BTC L1, we can get a lot of more based on L1, but not unlimited possibilities, right? You know, my background is from BSV. So I'm, yeah, with Jack Liu and other innovators like Josh bringing Ordinals Wallet. I think almost everything uh, are yeah, just familiar to BSV developers. Yeah, we play with UTSO quite a long time, and we know how to build it trustlessly, how to build the whole thing based on UTSO structure and the scripting, right? But yeah, I, I don't think BTC will scale like BSV. It, it will not increase the uh, block size, right? It will not try to like to uh to lower the transaction fees because that is very good and welcomed by miners. So yeah, we need to find innovative way, some other ways help us to scale. So BTC L1 first, then we can scale BTC in other ways. That is my strategy. So I know the scalable Bitcoin works and how we can build more amazing things based on that. And I know the limitation and the boundaries of BTC currently. How can we put all those amazing things together to create better things? Yeah. I think that is the unique position that we are just in. It is not like we, we create things that based on some uh, calculators, uh, calculator technology from Ethereum, right? It will not scale on, on Ethereum. Ethereum does, does not scale, right? So it yeah. needs a lot of scaling solutions on on unlimited L2 scale to scale. So why would we just bring in the calculator onto Bitcoin, right? We, yeah, I would, if possible, I will bring BTC connected to Solana, maybe, because Solana is still a very scalable solution, though a bit centralized, right? Yes. But yeah, that is the possible way, but it's, it's not like those parasites that just move the value of BTC out of the Bitcoin ecosystem, like a wrapped BTC, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is not unique. Uh, it is not in a unique position when BTC is wrapped. Then you can wrap everything, right? So I'm, I'm thinking that there might be some unique position for BTC is that the security model of proof of work and much easier for users to uh, verify the transaction using SPV, right? And the UTXO model that prevent double spending and can be easily detected by other blockchain. All those unique fe uh, features, which that should be put into good use to have a better overall solution. That sounds awesome. Now, have you heard of Zeus? Zeus, uh, they're trying to make Solana the second layer for BTC. Have you heard of Zeus? I, I don't think uh, they've no. launched. They haven't oh. launched. Yeah. That is uh, Dean Little. I think Dean Little is leading that. Ah, oh, Dean. Yes. <laughs> Dean is a very good guy. <laughs> yeah, he, that's his baby. That's what he's doing in Solana. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, mm-hmm. They have not launched yet, but they are making that uh, that bridge, that connection between mm-hmm. BTC and Solana. Yes. Yeah, I need to interview Dean now that you made me realize this is a this is a very important. It's almost like what, what I'm noticing more and more is is that you know you have different you have different innovations happening in BTC on chain. And what I'm realizing more and more is, is that everyone's just working together and it's becoming one big team because yeah, you want to be as interoperable, connected to everyone else in the network as possible. So in a sense, mm. you guys all work for the same Bitcoin. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's like you're, you, you yeah. work with Ordinal's wallet, you work with Unisat, you guys all work together. I find that very yeah. interesting. Yeah, that is the consensus. It is more like open source, pro- uh, open source software, right? So yes. many open source software, open source components can be put together, right, to build a more uh, well-designed software, right? So for us, I think that is the better consensus that all those developers will not need to trust each other, right? They can just build things based on the fixed protocol, right? It is not a like a, a you build things on a, a moving sand, right? It is a fixed protocol like Bitcoin. So all the signatures they can validate themselves, but it is not a maybe a trustless collaboration. There are still some trust from it. Like previous, we we have some uh fame based on pre- your previous work, and if two of us are working into one direction, then we can trust and verify, right? We just not it is just not just uh blinded to trust the other one's work. But right. we still can verify that on chain, right? So it cannot be cheated and it cannot be fooled. So this is the way that Bitcoin Bitcoin ecosystem can absorb more developers and to build a very strong economy based on Bitcoin. The, the cost something... of China is very expensive. Yeah. The, the cost of what? I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? The cost like of concern. trust, trust, trust. The cost yes. of yeah, it's very expensive. Like, uh, building a trustless trading experience on BTC, like DoSwap, right? It is much much better than the centralized exchange. If you want to, like, to trade between NUSD and the BTC, you. Previously, you have to deposit into the like into the the uh finance, then make the make the swap or trade there, then withdraw from Binance, right? Yes, and I think just one transaction on chain that can save a lot of cost. It is even more efficient right more cost efficient than binance because of yeah yeah it's just one transaction for atomic swap so you do not do deficit and withdraw uh, yeah everything is is verified on chain you can uh verify reserves on chain every block of time this Mm -hmm. is a very genius territory and it feels as if we're really we've already entered into a new age in Bitcoin where the entrepreneurship is happening on chain. And within that entrepreneurship, Lynn, what I keep seeing is, is, is that there is a gathering of both entrepreneur, creator, investor and user that comes together. And, and when you deploy something on Bitcoin, you will already welcome the entire community of Bitcoin to invest in your project. And we've seen a lot of tokenomics come about because of that. 
does dot swap will you guys do you guys have a coin uh do you, does yeah. dot swap have a coin or will it have a yeah. coin a yeah token? we have a code token yeah called dot swap dot dot swap dot swap dot dot swap it's a room yeah. the room yes nice okay nice i didn't know that so how's the yeah. dot how's dot swap dot dot swap doing where are you guys this at is, in in the room market yeah, cap it is like our uh loyalty program points currently uh, it doesn't have any real uh functionality there currently so it is uh points that need to be distributed and uh, uh award our loyalty users and especially the liquidity providers yeah awesome and it has it has yeah it, it starts from the beginning it's a brc20 protocol that we air dropped the new room protocol to make a switch right and Previously, it is called a DSWP dot swap. Okay, and um, four letters. Okay, so um, it has nearly to twenty. It has nearly twenty TVL in the AMM, which is the very big. I think in the whole ecosystem, you can sell whatever you want. You can purchase. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's that's really cool. I didn't know that. And so, where can you buy a dot? swap dot swap the room token yeah. right this is the rune version yeah. right the room token yes the, it's, the it's main available anywhere it's right main. yeah yeah but no not anyone want to use the marketplace experience to put up their uh asking orders and wait someone to buy from so yeah they just swap in our amm pools so you can find find out Many um, data platform that calculate the transaction for dot swap, they they are doing a uh, wrong mm, stats about the data because all almost all the transactions happens on chain on L one on our AM. No, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So do you foresee BTC having an on-chain order book in the future? Yes, definitely. And it has to be some global order book. Yeah. So yeah, we can have sort of off-chain, not on-chain, off-chain order book based on transactions, based on uh, signatures, right? Okay. information data and the signatures so any uh, market makers can place their orders there and to like to announce to other market makers and indexers for those order books is but that something that is happening right now is someone working on that uh we are working on that and we have a uh, yeah a very early draft of the protocol and some high level overview of how it will, can be done. Hey, thank but you so much for doing that. That's yet. awesome. Pardon? Yeah. It is not released yet, but if someone is, yeah, like, uh, interested in collaboration, yeah, it's open because I think it, it, it will enables different approach, like the indexers can just take fees using payment channels from other uh, uh, market makers and end users. It can support the infrastructure of the uh, indexer, right? The order book in indexer. And all the fees will go to the uh, makers. So makers placing their asking orders and the users can just trade trustlessly using this global order book and the uh, order fees were actually it was not necessary to be fees right so all the trading between two peers without a trusted third party so this is what it can be do it can be done on btc level one 
That's awesome. And yeah, and no overhead for the order book itself, just hmm. signatures and data passing around, right? That's awesome. That's really cool. So are you working with any other new implementation of uh, at that may be working within B BTC right now, like BitVM or Xiaowei Lu's S script? Is that something you guys are incorporating? Yes, yes, yes. We we work with S script with Xiaohui. Xiaohui is very genius, right? So he is yeah. actively working on the opcat and all the component and many things based on op opcat. So if opcat is live in maybe in end of this year, before end of this year, or maybe earlier next year, then they will create a lot of innovations based on that. Yeah, I believe so. So we are eager to find out what we can do. And we might have some alternative way of doing things. Yeah. That's amazing. But yeah, it's just a secret. I, I will not tell anyone. <laughs> okay. So what is in the future for, for dot swap? What what is your long term and short term vision? Where are you guys going? What's the game plan? Okay. So our master plan, Mars plan is that it is Uniswap on BTC. So yeah, we are going to be the Uniswap. We are going to be the biggest liquidity pools and welcoming others to join us, right? To build things together. And we only charge transaction fees, right? For that. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And we will have a open source protocol that help others to trade trustlessly. So this is the near future we can do to at least set up the L1 infrastructure for BTC. Then our mid yeah, our mid midterm is that when the transaction fees goes high then that will create a lot of demands, right? Because of the demands, then the transaction will, fees will go high, right? So if there are a lot of su uh, sustainable demands, then we can build things for like L2s or other scaling solutions based on L1 and the L2 seamlessly. The user will not have to worry about they they can just swap using cross chain swap or some sort of that to make atomic swap just like they are using our L1 the experience will almost the same will be almost the same right but that require a lot of in infra to support it like new wallets right yeah so yeah, yeah. It, without the innovation from wallets like you need to support like payment channels. You need to support PSBTs. You need to support a lot of advanced um, cryptographic protocols based on the uh, wallet from the wallet side. So I think in the midterm, because yeah, we need a lot of improvement for the infra, right? So in the midterm, when the infra is ready and there there's a lot of market demands there, then it will be quite possible that we can have some more scalable version of DOSWAP for anyone, right? Especially for applications. That's amazing. Lin, for those that are want to start using DOTSWAP now, where can they go download uh, DOTSWAP and how can they start using it today? Yeah, they can use like Xverse and the search for DOTSWAP.app which is our domain name, and they can use it using Xverse, using Uniset and OKX Wallet. Yeah, this is all usable on your mobile. Or you can, using your browser, go to .swap.app that can access our swap there. Mm -hmm. So what are the main trading pairs right now? Yeah, I... I suppose it is DOSWAP DOS, DOS token versus BTC currently. Okay. But the highest volume and the, the uh, most potential one is 
NUSD versus BTC. Really? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. really cool to hear. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to uh, look into it tonight and really jump into it. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited with what you guys are doing. Um, I-, I love the idea that you're going to be giving that no matter what happens and whatever they allow in BTC or they don't allow, that your mind is set on scaling with what BTC provides and that you're ready to give people a, a user experience whether it be through a second layer, off-chain, altcoin, but that all settles on the main chain. And I love how you are emphatic on the importance of building on-chain. And I really like what you said. Uh, you, you mentioned it in passing earlier. You said you emphasize the importance of making sure that the miners are getting paid. Maybe we can end with that point what did you mean by that emphasize the importance and i think you used the word um i forgot the word that 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 you said that um that you, the you, money that the that the money stays in bitcoin and doesn't go outside of bitcoin yeah we, we cannot make some parasite right there parasite. you go Parasites, yeah. That just yeah, parasite protocol that just draw value out of BTC. This is this is wrong. So I think we can help the shard two five six miners, those miners, to better use their equipment and be more like productive productivity on validating more transactions. Right? You can use the same amount of proof of work, then maybe we can use that kind of proof of work to earn to earn fees from like massive ch- transactions. So are you working oh. with any miners right now in that? Are there miners working with you planning to do this yeah, in yeah, the future? We, I have several miners friend and previously I built a uh uh, mining pool called uh, mine Bitcoin SV, right? So I know mining pretty much. What what I'm thinking is that when the fees goes high on BTC, when more demands there, then the transaction itself cannot handle. So so the sorry the block space itself cannot handle more transactions. Hmm. Then the okay, the ultimately all the transactions need to be settled on BTC. Yes. Right. It is just a matter of time. So if your transaction cannot be processed forever, like uh if you are using like one Satoshi per V byte fee rate and it will be like never settled on BTC currently, right? why would you send out those transactions? So you will not send out those transactions, right? So ultimately, I think from the demand side and the supply side, the block space is equal to all the demands, all the transactions need to be settled. Okay, this is one theory. And uh, because of that, the transaction fee cannot be so high. Right. Right. Because, yeah, all the transactions will settled. Then why you pay priority fees? So the fees are just for priority. If it needs to be settled, like in one block or two blocks, right? So you have to pay sufficient fees. Right. Okay. To make it higher priority to be processed, but ultimately all transactions need to be settled on L1. Okay. Correct. Yes. So if there are more demands than that, right? If there are more demands on that, so more demands than the capacity of BTC, then they will create some transaction that never settled then this kind of transaction has to be removed, moved to elsewhere. And where would they right. go? Where would they go? Yeah. 
they the the application will just use other solution to move their off chain, right? Off BTC blockchain. Then from this perspective, then the fees will not be so high because when transactions are moving out, like Ethereum currently, then the fee rate of the mainnet will drop. I see. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. It cannot maintain a very high transaction fee rate for like very long time, right? The, all the transactions will go other ways, like to L2s, to other, other chains, to other applications, right? So mm -hmm. I think the sustain, sustainable fee structure will be like several fees, like 1% uh, of the transaction value or less than that, right? It is comparable with traditional, our traditional ways of MasterCard or Visa or WeChat Pay, Alipay, right? Yes. So it will be, it will be a free market there in comparison with other po payment proce processing. So these transactions would never be settled on chain? If the fee rate is uh, high, then mm -hmm. there, there will be a lot of transactions that, that would never be settled, right? So in order to post process those transactions, then alternative way like L2s, like other scaling solutions will kick in, right? then those transactions can move to other places to be settled there, right? Correct, yes. Yeah, so so that, that re re will reduce the demand of the block space. The, the demand will diminish. Then, okay, the fee rate will drop. So I don't see there is a pos possibility that we have a sustainable high fee rate on BTC. That is a problem. Yeah, I'm arguing. I, I agree. I agree. It's 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 not sustainable. What we see uh, exchanges doing are is transaction batching. Can maybe yeah. you sp speak to transaction batching and how it works to our audience? Because that has been their solution. Would that work in this case? Would, would tra transaction batching work with dot swap, something like dot swap? Mm, it will not work with the swap because all the swap is trustless and uh, uh, atomic swap, right? So you get what you got in one transaction. It is not very, it is not possible that we can make some roll up or some sort of uh, merged transaction to save okay. a little. We, but uh, definitely we can explore that way, okay? If the transaction volume is so high, then it will be it will not hurt the uh user experience to wait others, okay? But uh, to my perspective, I will just say that in the future, the subsidy of the blocks for miners will be lower, right? Then there will be a problem there when transaction fees cannot be so high. Others may think that, okay, like if we have more demands to push up those transaction fees, right? But it will not happen in the long term because if the fees goes high, then there will there must be several transactions, a lot of transactions that can never be settled, right? Then mm -hmm. those transactions, if it never settled, then it will move elsewhere. So all the actual demands and supply will met, will be equal. If all those support and demands are satisfi satisfied, so why they paid priorities? It is just like, okay, so you, you can you wait like three blocks or 
six blocks, right? So it is just the priority fees, not transaction pro processing fees. Correct? Yes. You correct. pay for priority or you wait. Right? Yes. So yes. I don't think priority matters so much on BTC currently. Then okay, the block subsidy and the priority fees cannot support in a very long term, cannot be sustainable. Then we should look into other source of income, like merged mining, like reuse the BTC hash rate right, to secure more transactions on chain. More transactions is OK, because yeah, if just you take just one Satoshi from every transaction, right? And the, the transaction volume is so large, like on BSV, we can handle like 1 million transactions per, per second, right? If that is possible, that will create a lot of fees for miners, okay? So I'm thinking about how we can build things to enab enable our miners to collect as much fees as possible. That's amazing. Thank you for doing yeah, that. Not, yeah, not only priority fees. Currently, they are collecting priorities. But in the future, right, when it happened like Ethereum right now, nobody will use Ethereum mainnet. So the gas rate is dropping. That will happen on BTC again. All right. That's awesome. That's that sounds really good, man. I, I can't wait to hear more about your uh, your secret plans to make this happen because we need yeah. that in Bitcoin. We really do. Like like, unfortunately, what we have seen is is that the ecosystem for many years has become like you call it parasitic onto the miners, and it's good to see entrepreneurs like yourself bringing more on chain activity and focusing on growing. Um, the welfare of miners as time goes on. So thank you for doing that. Because as you said, uh, the, the block reward will decrease over time. And Bitcoin does need uh, to, to, to be nourished from within. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Lynn, any parting words before we leave? Yeah, just, just like trust in the humanity and the honesty right and uh, i think i hope everyone can enjoy the l1 solution brought by dosworth that's my ending nice <laughs> thank you thank you so much for your time lynn thank you for being with us and i look forward to seeing you again guys thank you for tuning in peace love and anarchy bye now we are dealing with a possible world war some will say we are already in a world war my condolences and prayers go out to everyone suffering under tyranny. It really sucks. I'm really sorry. But it seems as if people are starting to wake up regarding crypto more and more each day. And so it's in the description right here to read where we give our secret sauce and what we teach our subscribers because things are just that bad. You know, everyone needs this information. People need to know about sound cryptocurrencies that are actually private by default and to know how to properly use crypto. 